Well, and now, as announced by Mr. Maumbach, the Research Institute, Opinion Research Institute, SIVI, has developed an energy report and talked to many different people, and we're going to see the details in the few minutes. Uh, you can only argue well and have a discourse if you have facts. And before we are provided with facts, we're going to have an appetizer. Our colleagues from Tagesspiegel talk to people on the street, outside, and about the topic of the energy transition. Ich glaube schon daran, dass wir es schaffen. Ich glaube allerdings nicht, dass wir es schnell schaffen. Nicht in den nächsten 20 Jahren. Leider. Also wird noch ein bisschen brauchen, alle zu überzeugen, dass man ein bisschen was dafür tut. Die müssen um mehr Druck machen und entscheidungskräftiger werden in allen Fragen, vor allen Dingen auch Energie. Also bei den Autos fahren die Leute dicke SUVs, obwohl sie alle wissen können, sollten, dass es auch besser geht. Aber sie machen es ja nicht. Bei den Flugreisen ist es das Gleiche. Also insofern kommt man nicht umhin, Rahmenbedingungen der Politik zu setzen, die, soweit es eben geht, eben nicht in Verboten, sondern in Anreizen bestehen sollten. Steuervergünstigung, was weiß ich. Ja, Frau Mütze, nun haben Sie das Wort und bitte. Well, Mrs. Mütze, you have the floor and we would like to hear all the details uh, as quickly as possible. Oh, as quickly as possible. <laughs> well, we were commissioned by Uniper to conduct a study and uh, the study was started in March and it is ongoing. We are now collecting data in real time, basically. We didn't only talk to people in Germany, but we also to the people, to the population that is, but also to the decision makers in the industry. And the most recent data, representative data that we are collecting is what I would like to share with you now. We have a brief presentation as well, but let's start with the good news. In general, there people are very confident with regard to the energy transition and are open with regard to technology and innovations. 57% of the people asked said that they feel confident that renewable energies are able to ensure security of supply in the long run. And we have a chart that shows the details. We asked them about the energy sources of the future. New technologies such as hydrogen is even ahead of renewable energy such as wind and sun, solar energy. 23% are pragmatic and said that it's going to be a mix of all energy sources. People are very open with regard to new technologies, and uh, I'm delighted to see that. And another thesis that we found is that people in Germany know that the energy transition will only succeed if we have the right infrastructure. Infrastructure expansion is seen as the critical factor for the success of the energy transition. We asked people whether they think that storage, energy storage will be rather important or less important in the future. Nine of ten people said that it's going to become more important. And if you ask them about the most important parameters with regard to the energy supply in the future, you'll see that this is a general trend. Storage solutions are a topic amongst a group great, a large part of the population. Then, of course, it's energy efficiency, carbon neutrality, and one third of the persons asked believe that innovation is also extremely important. Why communication is going to be important when it comes to expanding the infrastructure is reflected on this chart. We asked people whether they or how well they feel informed with regard to the expansion of the electricity grid, which is required for the energy transition. 62% of the people questioned said they do not feel well informed. So there is a huge need for participation and communication with the people. It's going to be increasingly important. And another topic that is important is the energy source of the future, and that, of course, includes hydrogen. What we've realized during the survey is that hydrogen is considered to be the energy source with the greatest potential. 
When we ask people about the potential of hydrogen in the future, three of four people questioned, 76% believe that the potential is high. Now, um, a lot happened throughout the past year. People have become more familiar with the topic of hydrogen. So this figure has increased considerably compared to the previous year. Almost 84% believe that investment in this technology for the future is important. They believe that investments should rise and hydrogen is a topic that people feel more familiar with. But with regard to bridge technologies, we talk to the um, decision makers in industry and from politics, and we ask them how important they believe natural gas is as a bridge technology. The majority believes that natural gas will be required as a so-called bridge technology, less than one quarter only believe that this is going to be irrelevant. And the last major thesis of this study, which is ongoing, as I mentioned, is that when you talk, ask people about what they believe the energy industry means to them for, and the overall society, you get a feeling for the fact that energy, the energy transition is closely associated with accept, acceptance and social compatibility. A majority in Germany believe that people with low income are burdened by the energy transition and one out of two would like to see a compensation for low income um, households. And whether people are really willing to pay for the energy transition and for the energy sources of the future, um, the situation is might not be as you would like to see it. Only 37% of the population are willing to pay, spend more in order to support the energy transition and a carbon, more carbon neutral energy supply. 53% are not willing to pay anything. And compared to the figures of last year, there is even a slight decline, which is probably explained by the fact that people spend more time at home because of the pandemic and have become more sensitive with regard to prices here in this regard. Nevertheless, we can draw the conclusion that people are confident with regard to innovations and the energy transition. They are open with regard to technologies. They also have realized that hydrogen can be a technology of the future. Decision makers believe that natural gas is a bridge technology and that the energy transition will only be successful if it is also socially compatible and is accepted by the society as a whole. So that was quite quick, wasn't it? Yes, thank you very much. I've taken a lot of notes. I hope the viewers have as well. And if you haven't been able to do that, because we it was just a lot of information, we you can check out our website, Debate Energy. We also have a separate website for the topic that we just heard. And uh, stay tuned and share uh, any information that you would like to share. Now, Ms. Smith is going to join us during the panel discussion as well. You'll have a chance to talk to her as well. The next speaker is Svenja Schulz. She used to be a, mem a Minister of Innovation Research of North Westphalia since 2018. Since March of 2018, she's the Federal Minister for the Environment, Nature, Conservation, and Nuclear Safety. She will definitely return to the Parliament, and she might even become the Minister for the Environment again. And she might even not only tell us what was achieved in the last period, but will also be achieved in the next legislative period. Dear Mr. Kastorf, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I'd like to say that um, I believe that this program, which you selected for today, really hits the nerve of the energy debate because energy policy and the energy report you have published ask the questions that are the burning issues. How can we make the energy transition successful? How can we achieve climate neutrality by the middle of the century? And for that reason, I'm happy to join here, even if it's only online. In order to make the energy transition a success, um, the German government 
has made very important decisions over the recent weeks and months. And since this is often forgotten, let me explain what they are. With the Climate Protection Act, we have enshrined climate neutrality. We have uh, ruled on an exit path from coal and also transportation, um, um, mobility, uh, the refurbishment of buildings and an economic program worth almost 100 billion euros has been provided. Uh, and at the same time, we have managed to lift the target from 40 to 50 percent reduction of carbon um, emissions in the EU and managed to do so in the midst of the corona pandemic. That's a real success of the German presidency, which I am personally very proud of. All of these decisions uh, will now have consequences for the electricity market in Europe and in Germany. And some of the consequences are already foreseeable now, so I would like to point them out. One, the coal phase-out will happen more quickly than planned until now. I expect the interpreter apologizes, there's no sound. Oh, this can surely be repaired soon. Unfortunately, we are seeing this again and again over in recent days. Ms. Schulze, please bear with us. Hopefully, we can continue shortly. In the meantime, we could perhaps talk about infrastructure problems, but I don't want to preempt that here now. Um, has the situation been repaired? Ich frage die Regie. Die Verbindung ist abgebrochen. Uh, we have lost Ms. Schulze. That's unfortunately because uh, we wanted to involve Ms. Schulze in our panel discussion later on. And um, I uh, cannot assume her role and talk about the successes and what still needs to be achieved. If not, we need to rearrange our program a little. And um, continue with the other panelists or the other participants. Let's try and contact her again. Yes. Can you can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Namaste. That's great. <laughs> yeah. Namaste. Yes. Um, our lights connect. Great. Okay. So what are the consequences uh, we are facing now? The coal phase out will happen more quickly than envisaged until now, and I believe that the phase-out path selected by the German government on the basis of the old climate target will now be brought forward. Um, there will be acceleration by the market. We will probably not see um, coal-fired power generation in Germany from 2030 onwards. Apologies. We have lost Ms. Schulz again. Um, Unfortunately, not always can we control the energy flows in such a way that we can maintain the connection. Uh, let's continue. Coal-based power generation is an interesting example, of course. And uh, as I said earlier, Ms. Svenja Schulze is from North Rhine-Westphalia, the um, German state with the highest uh, number of inhabitants and this she Ms. Schulze became a minister because she had experience with innovation and research with all of the th things we need now to make the energy transition a success so she was part of that process in North Rhine Westphalia and I know I hope that innovation helps us to re-establish the contact with Ms. Schulze Ms. Schulze are you there Also, meine lieben Zuschauer. So, ladies and gentlemen, I would suggest that uh, we now start a discussion with those whom we can hear and see. And I would assume 
that that's what we need to do now. And if Ms. Schulz joins us then, she can tell us then what she has been unable to tell us now. So she will have the opportunity later on. Okay, then I would um, like to ask Ms. Mützer to join us here now. And the other participants should join us online where possible. So whom are we seeing here now? We see Mr. Mauer, whom you already know. We don't see Jim Östemi yet. Michael Vasiliadis. There she is again, Ms. Schultz. So great. Is that in the top right hand corner? Is that Mr. Heim from Client Solutions SE? Yes, it is. So a warm welcome to you as well. And uh, is anyone still missing? Okay. You know, Mützer is with us here. We have a hybrid event here. We are social distancing here. So let me start with Mr. Vasiliadis. Not entirely politically correct, but um, social compatibility was the catchword I wrote down. Um, um, when the survey was first presented. So doing everything in a socially compatible way is important. 53% don't want to pay more for energy. Only 2% are prepared to pay more. What does that tell us about society and about the social compatibility of what we need to achieve? Mr. Visianis, the floor is yours. Have you heard me? Herr Vassiliadis. Mr. Vassiliadis. So I heard you on and off. That's why I didn't hear your question in full. Can you hear me now? I'm going to try again. Mr. Vassiliadis, what I said was based on what Ms. Mütze presented to us earlier in terms of social compatibility. In the times of the pandemic, the financial burden on people is high. There's a lot of disquiet. Now, climate protection and the energy transition have to be implemented. We need to spend more money, and everything, everyone needs to become involved. That was the trailer shown at the beginning. Everyone needs to play a role. But now only 53% don't want to pay more, and only 2% are prepared to pay more for energy. What does that tell us about the situation of the society we're in? Is it possible to go ahead with the energy transition under these circumstances if the acceptance in society isn't there? I think it's doable, but um, um, the level of acceptance you mentioned needs to be taken into account. So as far as I'm concerned, we're entering a new phase of the energy transition. If we take a look back the past 20, to 20 years, were about conventional energy um, 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 fighting with renewables and it was a question of of yeah faith basically whether you were in, in favor of the one or the other but now we are have entered a new phase uh, we want people want pragmatism people um, want things repaired that don't work and your question about the social balance is a very important one until now there are very few compensating mechanisms, and that's due to the fact that the um, energy transition was based on um, motivating or incentivizing uh, the move away from um, expensive energy generation. That won't be automatic. If we want to be successful, the, it has to be affordable for the people, and the people need to be prepared to pay a little extra. And as far as I'm concerned, these compensation mechanisms, which we know, which we know from the tax, from the fiscal uh, world, should be transitioned to the energy transition. And um, um, what we're doing in industry is putting the burden, the financial burden, on production processes. And that's what we need to think about, because that will distort competition going forward. Now, I wanted to switch to Sven Östermeer here, the new um, 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 term of office in Germany is about to start. So we will be needing more money during that term of office in order to get the people to support this process, this energy transition. It's always good to have money, but my fear is that in the next legislative period, um, the economic position will be a different one, given the money we spent on Corona. 
in future we won't have that money anymore. And the area I'm taking care of at the moment, um, which is transport, I'm the chairman of the transport committee. In future, we won't have more money to spend on rail, on bicycles, on the transition, on road repair and road building. But what we need to do is we need to eke out the one and ramp up the other. So if you want the mobility transition, um, you need to uh, get electromobility onto the road. The diesel privilege we have in Germany needs to be removed. We have damaging subsidies worth 50 million uh, euros, and we need to get away from that. Of course, planning certainty, investment certainty are required, so we need a transitional period. But we need to tackle it. We need a road tax that is uh, uh, takes um, into account that anyone who wants to ride an SUV will have to pay more, and this money will be taken to reduce the burden on vehicle owners who buy a more greener vehicle. So we need these various tools also for our budget to move these sums and a real lever for the energy policy of the future is the carbon price. We've managed to increase that to 25, thanks to the Bundesrat. The government wanted 10 euros, which would have been a joke. Um, um, but even 25 euros isn't good enough. We need a proper price here. We need to reduce the burden on the people here in Germany. Coming back to infrastructure. Now, even though you are uh, in charge of transport policy in Germany, you, you also, as a member of the Green, um, support energy policy. What can medium-sized businesses do to support this process? What can you say what the future could look like here? Thank you for your question. I think medium-sized companies um, can play a driving role. Let me mention three aspects here. The one is medium-sized companies are consumers of fossil energy and through in, um, efficiency improvements and through avoiding and replacing um, carbon fuels, they have to make a huge contribution. The second point is um, medium-sized companies play a driving role in innovation. Um, Medium-sized companies, particularly in Germany, play or have, has, um, have achieved a lot in the area of innovation, particularly in building technology and climate technology. If we look at um, heating systems and air conditioning systems, we are using power-based heat pumps, for example, with a high Efficiency, we have technologies such as hydrogen, where we are already um, using gas-based appliances um, and, and switching them or preparing them in such a way that they can use hydrogen in future. Already today, 30% can be act mixed to the natural gas. That will be increased going forward. And at the end of the day, the medium-sized companies and even small companies, such as um, um, the trades, will play an important role in making heating systems um, and on, on, on achieving the transformation of the heating um, sector in the transport sector. So the mix with hydrogen is the way forward for a growth path. path. So an energy transition with more hydrogen and then more growth? Yes, I'm convinced of that. We're hearing today that hydrogen would be the champagne of the energy transition. I think that is a totally wrong statement um, because it focuses primarily on the cost and the scarcity of hydrogen. What I'm seeing today is uh, uh, that the scarcity problem is trying to be resolved by looking at what is available, what is on offer. 
in a market economy, innovation can be triggered and innovation can be produced if you have a stable demand for a good, because then there are incentives for investors to actually invest in technology and get to big leaps of innovation. If we compare that market to the green um, power that um, has, uh, whose share has increased over recent years, it wasn't increased because it was made more scarce and limited to some ap applications. It was made available to a broader range of applications. And in that respect, we have to provide a solid demand basis for hydrogen. The building sector is one sector which is um, already continuing contributing to carbon reductions today. That would be a question to Mr. Maubach, but uh, Mrs. Mitzer has been very patient here. Let me take a step back and ask her about social acceptability. That's the topic dear to my heart, otherwise the transition won't work. You've seen the numbers. Do you have an idea? Um, uh, what would I, Nina Mitzer, now recommend to politicians? What should be done in future so that the whole thing works? Um, that's a very good question, of course. What would I do? I believe we have got to a point where a lot has already been done. Um, the sustainability, the urgency is much more present in the minds of people than it was a few years ago. We are seeing that. But they're still not prepared to pay for it. Yes, but... Um, what we had a few decades ago, this being a niche topic, um, which I, where, 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 where the, I as a consumer wasn't involved in, but now, as we can see in the preparations for the elections, these topics are being addressed more and more now. So, And that's a good prerequisite, a good basis. And key will be communication. I need to explain uh, what costs how much and well it costs a lot of nerves communication is possible will we be able to communicate with you now miss schultzer i do hope so um miss schultzer communicare or communication I, I, the word the origin of the word is latin communicare which also means creating things now if you're hearing this and earlier on you talked about coal and we need to achieve this together um if looking back now and looking into the future and look at what has been done and what still needs to be done, do we need to redirect not the political discussion but the actions? Do we need to have? Do we need a new priority? Um, Annalena Bergbach, the candidate of the Greens for the Chancellery, said that climate protection is the topic of our time. We must not fail. What do you say? Well, it's not just Annalena Baerbock who said that. If we look at uh, the SPD's program, then Olaf Scholz has made it very clear that the clear future mission needs to be to redirect um, the developments now, because the next decade will be the deciding decade. The next decade will decide whether we can manage to make our societies carbon neutral quick enough in order to avoid climate change, or can we adapt? Um, that uh, would mean facing huge costs. And therefore, I'm convinced, and the SPD are convinced, that over the next 10 years, a lot of investment needs to be made, because it's not good enough to just have a carbon price that makes carbon only more expensive. But what we need is alternatives, options, we need more charging points for electric vehicles so people buy an electric vehicle. Uh, the German railway system um, needs to be um, achievable. Um, and, and, and heat is also something we all need. Um, tenants need it. So the carbon price will need to be paid by the landlords. We are. That's the discussion we are facing. Yeah, power comes 
from the plug, but how does it get into the plug? That's the question. We heard a lot about hydrogen, and I now would like to ask Mr. Marbach. Uh, well, there's a lot of support for hydrogen. We all want to invest in research and in de in de development, all good. So um, what um, will Unipol, as a front-runner of Fortum Germany, Will that be the hydrogen company? Will you invest there? Will you Do you see the future? Um, Uniper is, of course, the hydrogen, a hydrogen company. Uniper is a company that is capable of playing a major role in the global hydrogen business. We already have a global organization today that knows how to manage gas. We um, are operating worldwide in the area of gas. We have the links to the regions that could supply hydrogen to Germany going forward, such as the Middle East. And for that reason, we will become a big hydrogen player. I believe we will become a factor when it comes to importing hydrogen. And we are all agreed that the hydrogen demand we will have and which we need going forward to replace oil, coal and gas will be so huge that not everything can be produced in Germany. Mr. Mauer, um, what's the share? Is it 12, 13, 15, 20 percent hydrogen in Uniper? In our business? Yes, your business. And in terms of future investment, the, 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 the share in turnover at the moment is negligible. Of course, like everyone else, we are only at the starting point. We now have to set the points correctly to develop projects together with politics. We are now with hydrogen where we stood with new renewables 25 years ago. We knew there are technology which we can develop. We need to go through learning curves, and that needs to happen in Germany, and it will only happen if we do that hand-in-hand hand with the other participants. We've got them all at the table, the trade unions uh, representing the employees. Um, um, politics needs to be involved because they will set the framework. We need companies like Fisman, as explained earlier, who develop technology and provide the technology required to increase hydrogen demand. If that all works hand in hand, it'll be big business for all of us. Mr. Oestermeer, uh, will hydrogen play a bigger role in the transport sector as well? Will we become the hydrogen um, country, the hydrogen um, nation? Let me quickly come back to what Mr. Maubach said in his first statement, the champagne of the energy. That goes back to something uh, Claudia Kempfert said. Uh, we need everything because the climate crisis is so serious. We don't need everything everywhere, and we can't use everything everywhere at the same time because compared, um, um, because there's a lot of developments ten still required. So we should look at availability, um, affordability, environmental effects, and, uh, and then um, it is clear um, the decision has been taken for German cars. There's not a single German car producer who um, produces hydrogen cars, um, series um, um, production, that is. Um, um, the FTP believe that the combustion system can be saved um, by using hydrogen. So in the car industry, it's electromobility going forward. Um, but elsewhere, it's hydrogen. What is key is we need renewable energies for that, and production of hydrogen needs to be climate neutral. Transport needs to be climate uh, neutral. Only then is hydrogen green hydrogen. The good news is our, Germany's, our German companies are leading in hydrogen technology. We need to invest there more. We have to become the um, nation that provides a technology worldwide. Um, hydrogen will be too valuable and too scarce for it to be used everywhere. So we need to focus on industry and on aviation. That is where it will play a key role. And for that reason, yeah, we have to take the right decisions and 
one comment on the environment minister who said we need more charging point. I like hearing that, but um, is there another German government which I don't know? Because I want to know who you are appealing to, because the way politics is done now, uh, you ha we have an environmental minister who says a lot of important things are subscribed to, and then there's a transport minister and agriculture minister who say the opposite. That needs to end in September. If Germany needs to wants to achieve its climate targets, then all coalition partners have to commit themselves in the same way, and the success will be measured by tons of carbon saved. Virtual environmental protection is good enough. We need real environmental protection. So that's the word from our um, future transport minister, perhaps. Oh, you need to win the elections first of all. So, um, back to Ms. Schulz. What do you say? Do you agree? That's then, uh, you have, well, you can start the coalition uh, negotiations here if you like. Security of supply is, in, is crucial. Green hydrogen, the whole energy transition towards renewables, um, need to ensure needs to ensure security of supply. Tell us something. That puts our mind at rest here. Security of supply is key, of course. We are an industrial nation. We rely on power being available at all times. But that's also possible with renewables. It has been shown that that is possible. When I started looking into this topic many years ago, it was said that 4% uh, is the maximum the network could cope with. Uh, but now we have days where 70% of renewables are in the power market. On average, we have 45%, so it's doable and it is achievable. And yes, security of supply is a valuable good. And yes, a government, uh, there needs to be a government on this side of the um, CDU, CSU, who make this their subject. Whether we do climate protection is not the question. The question is how we do it. And my key priority would be to do it in such a way to ensure that we have jobs in industry here going forward and that no one's left behind. It needs to be fair. Climate protection does not become, does not have to, uh, must not be a project for elites. Everyone needs to be able to afford this. And the transformation ahead of us needs to be fair because otherwise it won't work. Mr. Heim, are you still with us? Um, so, what weighting do you see there? How should renewables be um, split hydrogen and so on? What percentages do you see? And what kind of re uh, research and development would you like to see there? Um, that is a very good question, of course. Um, um, it would be nice to have clarity to actually, uh, enough clarity to uh, specify percentages. But let me come back to what's just been said. The currency uh, used to measure uh, success is tons of carbon saved. But let me add the word now. So climate protection is not what's been, what will be achieved by 2030 or 2050, but each ton of carbon saved now, um, accumulated up to 2030 will be worth 10 tons of carbon. So against that background, I do believe we um, don't need a um, supply-based um, distribution of a scarce good. On the contrary, we need to look at what sectors can now make concrete um, contribution to reducing carbon emissions. And there are, I do believe that the building sector can play an important role because the technologies are available already to use hydrogen and um, the infrastructure is there, the gas network is there. Up to 10% of hydrogen can be blended with natural gas. So in our market economy, it always makes sense to be open to different technologies in um, and to allow competition and to have trust in the opportunities being perceived by companies who will then deliver solutions. 
just like we are seeing that already today in many areas. In Germany, Germany has a good track record. Record when it comes to successes of this kind. And before we ask for the questions and get answers, I would like to give you the opportunity to ask questions. In the stream on the right, you are able to ask your questions. I will read them out and I will then um, pass them on to the participants, to the panelists. Mr. Vasiliadis, what do we need in order to? create a growth path for renewables, which will hopefully also lead to new jobs and security of supply. Well, we have to agree on expanding renewables first. Everything that we've discussed now, that is for hydrogen and um, carbon emission reduction, is associated with renewables and their distribution on the grid. Um, during election periods, during campaigns, um, well, people like to say things, but nevertheless, we need cold-fired power plants in Baden-Württemberg in the south of Germany because we don't have sufficient grids. Uh, we need renewables. We need lines. We need a European answer. Um, we. The individual nation-state policies will not help us. We have had many basic discussions, basic debates, but now we have to be prepared to achieve the major topics, 50, 30, but the targets are not the same as the implementation of the individual steps. So we need avenues, we need roadmaps that companies can rely on, employees can rely on, You can, or employees can be qualified. Um, I am convinced that we can make the transition succeed. However, I'm worried that if we continue as we have been operating in the past, the most important parameter that has to be taken into account in addition to carbon emissions reductions is time, and we might lose sight of time. When we talk about hydrogen, well, hydrogen as such is not rocket science. It's nothing new. The question is whether we are able to use hydrogen and produce hydrogen in a way that is as green as possible. Will we be able to agree on compromises that will not um, take years? We don't. Of course, we want to achieve the targets, but if we discuss, if we're too programmatic and not pragmatic enough, we will lose time and trust. Of course, we can create good jobs, but they don't happen overnight. Active industry policy would also mean that a minister of economics can learn and also take action and not just talk. Now, I do hope that we're not going to lose months in an exciting election campaign period. Um, well, are you afraid that we're going to lose jobs before the transition is achieved? We talked about the momentum. Now, for 20 to 30 years, we're talking about the energy transition and that it is vital. But now we finally realize that the world is becoming tighter and smaller and that we have to take action. Are you afraid of jobs being lost? Well, I have two clear answers. You asked whether people are willing to invest money in the energy transition. You mean more money, probably, because people are paying already. They are paying the highest energy and electricity price in Europe without any, um, well, we, of course, we have job losses in coal, for instance, in the coal industry. We have um, a social plan, and my trade union is in favor of that, but we've lost jobs nevertheless. In order to create new jobs, we invested a lot in these regions, and whether new hydrogen-based industries are going to be located there or whether we build cycle paths for the tourism of the future isn't really clear yet. So the general transformation line can be successful. However, it will not happen without support. We need active industrial policy. Many of the exits that we are witnessing, nuclear power is an example, are still associated with job losses. Of course, many green jobs have been created, but nevertheless, we have to create a continuous and high-quality development that's possible, but it's 
not that obvious and easy. Can you translate that into figures? Can you quantify how many new jobs have been created and how many jobs have been lost? There's a foundation, Arbeit and Umwelt, Work and Labor and uh, Environment. They, I commissioned a study with them, and a lot of good jobs have been created, especially in public administration at the approval authorities. And uh, of course, they also include many other new jobs in growth areas. So overall, it's about 300, 400,000. But what we have lost are industrial jobs that have a certain environment. Coal, for instance, doesn't only involve the people who are employed there, but also employed in industries associated with the coal segment. If you lose jobs in industry, you don't only use, lose the jobs, but also value you created, contributions to value creation. If you don't create stable employment in the long run, you can't just compare these two areas. But basically, we have a lack of skilled labor. We have many, many areas that we have to do more. Well, let me get back to the figures just so that we can create uh, proportions. 300, 400,000 new jobs, and we lost about 700,000. Would that be OK? Well, it's well, in our industry, it's uh, there is a balance. But I don't really know what the situation is in electromobility and the associated transformation. Currently, I think it's a balance. But it's really not something that is um, happens without any um, support. Trade unions have been a constructive partner. IG BCE has always been very influential. Your predecessor. And you are also very influ influential, Mr. Vasiliadis. But there's another survey that I would like to address concerning the topic of people having to participate, like um, we just heard from Sive. How many people, how much do people want to spend on the energy transition? Steuererhöhungen und höhere Stromrechnungen bin ich bereit für ein Jahrzehnt, damit dann meine Kinder noch wissen, was Schnee ist. Das bin ich bereit zu geben. Schon jetzt sind ja die, die erneuerbaren Energien, zumindest in Zeiten, wo viel aufkommt, relativ günstig. Ich wäre auch bereit, mehr zu zahlen. Ich glaube aber gar nicht, dass das der große Punkt ist. Definitiv wäre ich bereit, mehr dafür zu bezahlen, einfach weil es nötig ist, dass was geändert wird. Easy halt auch ein bisschen mehr dafür zu zahlen, dafür, dass man halt auch ein besseres Gefühl hat. Also jetzt nicht nur für das bessere Gefühl, sondern auch wirklich für die Wirkung, die man auch dann dadurch auf die Umwelt hat. Wir müssen alle mitmachen, sonst macht es ja gar keinen Sinn, oder? Yes, join the debate. Ich kann nur dazu aufrufen. Join the debate. If you have questions that I could ask for you or that you would like to ask, please do so. The discourse, a good discourse, is only base, possible on the basis of facts and questions. Janina Mütze, after you've heard this, do you think a party will have the opportunity to be more successful during the election campaign if it is addressed, if it addresses a specific topic such as climate protection. Oh, yes, of course we conduct surveys on this topic as well. Climate protection is a critical topic. Before the corona pandemic, coronavirus pandemic, Climate protection and the environment was extremely important to people, and it is still one of the most important topics. Also in the political arena in the next few months. Of course, health topics are important right now. They may be considered to be a priority, but depending on how well we manage the pandemic, um, we will have a stronger focus on um, the environment or not. So if you ask people whether they believe that climate policy has an impact on their personal lives, one out of two people believe that they will have to um, deal with financial burdens. And they know that climate change or, or the climate targets will not be for free. So you have to be honest about that. 
I've just received a lot of questions on my iPad, and as long as we still have time, I would like to work through them. Where and when will green hydrogen be produced? Question by Kostachinos Hiderakis from the Fraunhofer Institute. I'd like to ask this question to Mr. Baumbach. Well, I already mentioned that a majority of the hydrogen of hydrogen will be produced will not be produced in Germany in the long term. It will be produced outside of Germany in regions that have better preconditions with regard to the use of photovoltaics, that is, the south of Europe. In Abu Dhabi, for instance, they announced that they would build the largest solar power plant with 15 megawatts, the largest power plant in the world, and with a long-term power purchase agreement, 1.3 US cents per kilowatt hours is the price. Is that this price is extremely low. And I don't think we will be able to um, produce hydrogen at this price in Germany. We need so a solar power infrastructure in order to do so. Mr. Schulz, can coal-fired power plants be converted to natural gas and then be made available for hydrogen usage? Uh, th this would be a staged concept as compared to a quick conversion. The Coal Commission suggested a staged f phase out of coal based production. And there are many ideas on what you can do with coal fired power plants. In the Rhenish lignite mining area, there's going to a model according to which a coal fired power plant is going to become a storage facility. We will not only need more renewable based electricity, but also storage technology. And that's one of the ideas from research and science that will be implemented in the Rhenish lignite mining area. And we are going to be to phase out gradually phase out nuclear and coal gradually. And what is decisive, in my opinion, is that we're going to create good prospects for the regions. The market is going to not going to be able to regulate this. Um, we need um, subsidies, grants, in order to revitalize the regions. Question to Jim Ostemir, wouldn't it make sense to um, have admixture regulations to make sure that filling stations or people who want to use combustion uh, um, want to use combustion engines should pay for the price, should pay for increases. Well, when aviation, aviation is an area um, where we can use hydrogen. We want to use green hydrogen. We don't want to use. Pod or, or um, animal feed stuff as a fuel. But in the area of uh, mobility, um, green electromobility has prevailed. We want to make sure that the coal exit is accelerated. Now, for the diesel, uh, for, in the mobility, um, arena, it's really more difficult. We will have to put some thought into the existing vehicles and vehicles outside in other areas that cannot be electrified that quickly. But with regard to new vehicles, I'm certain that they're going to be electrical. Mr. Heim, very difficult question from Janis Dunkert. Hydrogen is an energy source that has to be produced first. This is associated with an energy loss of 30 percent in electrolyzers. Recovery of electric, electrical energy on the basis of H2 leads to an energy loss of 50 percent. How do you can renewables, how are we going to how are you able to produce additional material and uh, areas? Now, the last sentence is not really clear to me. How, how can you create additional material and areas with renewables? Well, I'm sorry, I don't under, understand the last question, says Mr. Heim. Uh, I'll focus on the first part of the question. And we are. 
aware of the fact that energy is lost when you produce hydrogen, and that's why we want to use green electricity in order to produce hydrogen. In some cases, excess electricity is sold to other countries at negative prices, and that's precisely the excess power that we want to use to operate the electrolyzers to produce green hydrogen. Green hydrogen can be stored, and that's the good thing. You can also feed hydrogen into the existing gas grids, or you can also find other um, types of storage and make sure that hydrogen can be transported and that hydrogen can also be transported from the place of generation to the place of consumption. And that's why we believe that despite the energy demand during production, it makes sense to apply this procedure and this technology and to make um, hydrogen available. Now, SMEs are on the agenda. Now, a question to Mr. Vasiliadis. Will the EU tax taxonomy in its current form be considered as a job motor, an engine, or a job killer? That hasn't really been decided yet, in my opinion. That's precisely one of the debates that we are engaged in. And this is associated with the entire Green Deal. And there are other components that are going to be um, debated hotly in the next few weeks. I can't really give you a clear answer on this, but I would say that there is a risk of 60 to 40. Mr. Zieler would like to know what role international cooperation will have on the promotion of hydrogen technologies, um, cooper cooperative ventures with um, East Asia, for instance. This is a question for Mr. Maubach. Well, we will not only cooperate with Asian countries, we are already doing this in the area of natural gas and renewable energies, but we're going to work with other com countries. A lot of fuel cell technologies, for instance, come from Southeast Asia and Asia, so it's going to be a huge international project. As far as I recall, there w was a very interesting cooperative venture between Fisman and Panasonic on fuel cells um, that's very close that's closely associated to hydrogen with hydrogen well we have to think global otherwise it won't work Mr. Schulze we only talked about the expansion of the infrastructure briefly and it is vital for an energy transition what is the current situation with regard to the infrastructure expansion acceptance in the gesellschaft shouldn't it be quicker in order to achieve more acceptance in the society well when it comes to expanding the infrastructure we have to accelerate the situation we have to achieve more michael vasiliadis always says that with regard to the electricity grid expansion we are working at the speed of a snail and uh, we've changed a lot in terms of the legislation we but definitely things have to be speeded up, and it has to be, con be one of the central missions of the government. Well, wh what does that actually mean, be quicker, one year, five months? Um, you still have some time left, and you are the current minister. Well, there's one thing that we have to achieve, and we promised that we would achieve that, is that the growth path of renewable energies will be raised. Um, our plans to date are not sufficient, and all parties involved are aware of that. And as soon as the CDU is able to negotiate again, they have their the top candidate now, they should be able to start working again. Now, what are the levers that have to be adjusted in order to improve the situation? This is a, a question that I would like to ask to both politicians. We might see you again in the next legislative period, but you have a chance to do some campaigning now and tell us what the areas are in which you would like to do some fine-tuning, and then we'll have to continue with the next topic. Well, I think the most important thing is that decisions are taken. Decision-making takes much too long. Svenja Schulze 
mentioned the um, infrastructure, the electricity infrastructure and electromobility. The question whether electromobility is the main topic in um, for cars, and if, as long as that hasn't been decided, you don't really build up a good charging station infrastructure. We have lost and are losing valuable time because the basic decision of 100 percent renewables and the quick phase out from coal hasn't been taken yet. The next federal government will definitely um, take clear decisions and set benchmarks. The coronavirus pandemic should have taught us some lessons. The fax machine is a symbol for the fact that we are not that modern and has been used for the health centers and this pandemic. Um, the next government will have to show a clear commitment towards climate protection, otherwise we will not be part of it. Well, that's a clear statement. I do hope all um, colleagues and all the viewers heard that. Mrs. Schulze, you have the floor. In addition to the expansion of renewables, energy efficiency will have to be one of the priorities. We have to achieve more in this area. We have to support the industry in order to decarbonize more quickly. That's my target. I want the industry and the good jobs in the industry remain in Germany, to remain in Germany. And this will only be possible if we support the energy intensive industry in making it carbon neutral. We have to expand the grids more quickly. We need more incentives when it comes to renewable energies. Digitalization has to be progressed. We need more storage facilities. So the next government has a lot of work to do. We have made progress, but the next 10 years will be decisive, and that's when we will have to reconcile social and economic matters. Ten years, that's quite long. Uh, but we're not going to assess or judge at this juncture. We want to make sure that we have a platform for discussions because 10 years is long. And we will really try to fuel any debates on hydrogen, etc. Thank you very much to the participants. Mr. Schulz and Mr. Vassiliadis, Mr. Heim, Mr. Malbach, and Shem Özdemir. Thank you very much for being with us. I learned a lot, and uh, that's the way it should be.